Well, welcome to Never Again Is Now, a podcast about anti-Semitism. I'm Evelyn Marcus. And I am Phyllis Zimbler-Miller. While much of the media attention about school anti-Semitism is focused at the college level, K-12 American schools are experiencing their fair share. Our guest today, Howard Lovey, is an author, book editor, and journalist who specializes in Jewish issues. He's going to share with us insight into what is happening in K-12 American schools. Howard, welcome to our show. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. First, it's, it's Howard Lovey. Although if you ask my Hungarian grandfather, it's Lovey with the O, the umlaut of the O, but I pronounce Lovey. Lovey. Okay, Howard Lovey. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Let's start with some troubling content that's being used to teach K-12 through students about anti-Semitism. The content is provided by the National Education Association, the NEA, using material from Jews for racial and economic justice. What does this document propagate? Yeah, you, you know, you have to really take a look at who's teaching the teachers here. And uh, uh, the National Education Association is a very powerful union, a uh, large union of, of, of teachers. And um, they uh, uh, have a, uh, a website where they want to educate their teachers about how to teach anti-Semitism, which, which is fine. It's a great goal. And, uh, and so, but among the, uh, the documents there is this uh, uh, document by, the, by JFREJ um, that propagates a specific political agenda that portrays Israel as things like a white settler colonial state, uh, ignoring the complex history and diverse uh, demographics of Israel and the Jewish people. Um, it, it, there are a number of troubling things in this document, and it's it's very much uh, uh, written. Uh, uh, it, it's a distortion of history. It fosters mi misinformation about Jews and, uh, and, and also what anti-Semitism is. It, it creates this kind of a, a straw man by repeating the lie that Zionists believe that any criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic, and then they proceed to tell why it's wrong. So it, it's it's uh, it's kind of this distorted funhouse mirror of, of what anti-Semitism really is. And it's troubling that teachers are being taught uh, based on this document. What is this group? I mean, just a sentence or two about what's, the, what's their end goal? Yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, they call themselves Jews for racial and economic justice, but a lot of these groups aren't really uh, founded by Jews. Maybe there are a few token anti-Zionist Jews on there, but as, as we know that most Jews uh, in the U.S. and around the world are Zionists, but it has a, a, this anti-Zionist uh, bent. Um, you know, some people say far left. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, hesitant to even use that term because here's where kind of that horseshoe theory comes into into play where the far left meets the far right in, in anti-Semitism. And uh, 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 so, so they, they partner with groups like Jewish Voice for Peace, which uh, is ostensibly Jewish, but is actually not if you take a look at it. Uh, so to the uninitiated, to teachers who aren't aware of, 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 of where these documents come from, it looks like they come from Jewish groups when in fact they don't. Could you could you explain a little bit more about that? Why why do you call Jewish Voice for Peace essentially not a Jewish group, and also this Jews for Racial and Economic Justice? Well, uh, you know, I'm sure that there are some Jews in Jewish Voice for Peace. It wasn't founded by Jews. It was it was founded uh, and and run by uh, um, anti-Israel uh, people, and in, in many cases, not not Jews at all, but. You know, it creates this image of well, who you know these are Jews and and who who can be uh, against peace. But if uh, but if you if you take a look at uh, at the rhetoric, it's very much pro Hamas, uh, um, uh, pro terror, um, and, and things like that. You know, it's it's uh, it, it, you know other people I guess smarter than I have have really dug into what Jewish Voice for Peace really is and. And they're they're not really a, a Jewish group. And Jews for Racial and Economic Justice, I'm not as familiar with them. Um, I, I became aware of, the, of them when I when I took a look at this document. But what I saw 
who they were partnering with, I could tell that it's, it's very much agenda driven. It's to create this impression that these left-leaning Jews uh, are, are anti-Israel. Uh, when it's not the case, I'm a left-leaning Jew and I'm not anti-Israel. So, so, so are you saying these groups uh, consist of Jewish people who have non-Jewish ideas, according to you? Or do you say they are not Jewish by affiliation, I mean, as uh, ethnically or religiously? No, I'm not saying that at all. Um, I'm saying that these these groups are funded and founded by people who have an agenda. They might attract well-meaning uh, uh, left-leaning Jews, um, but that's not really who they're after. They're they're, they're, they're you know they're, they're more uh, um, a, a political organization whose mission it is to de delegitimize Zionism and to de delegitimize Jew, uh, um, <clears throat> the Jewish attachment to Israel. And the way to do that is to create an organization that has this veneer, this 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 sheen of of some Jews involved, but that's not really, um, you know, uh, that's not really their target. Their target is the mainstream media, and so when they want to to quote somebody um, um, who is a left leaning Jew, they'll go to Jewish Voice for Peace rather than the majority, ninety eight percent or or so, uh, of Jews who are who are Zionists. And, yeah. and without going too far into this, I just, the important word that you said was funded, but we we have other things to talk about, but that's really the key, who funds these organizations. Yeah, Evelyn? yeah. Um, so um, there has been a teacher, Howard, that uh, who reached out to you, and that teacher uh, has been unable to get, well, the teacher reached out to you about this program that was, um, preaching against Zionism in classrooms. Um, well, how, the teacher has been unable to get support from various Jewish organizations to discuss her concerns about this content. Can you tell yeah. us about this? Well, she was the one who first alerted me to the National Education Association uh, website and, and, the, and the material that's on there. And so she wanted it uh, 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 addressed and possibly removed because it doesn't really educate people about anti-Semitism. Um, and so she went to a number of Jewish organizations um, and uh, and they pretty much dismissed her. I, I think it's not that, you know, and, and I'm just guessing here, I'm guessing that the NEA is a very powerful organization and, you know, uh, Jews, uh, Jewish organizations these days have to kind of pick and choose their battles. Um, and taking on the NEA would would you know is a huge undertaking. So that that's my guess as to why she was kind of slipped off a, a little bit. So she she was very frustrated, and she came to me with with this, and and so I wrote about it uh, uh, for various publications just to kind of make people aware that this is what's going on. But uh, uh, I, I I wrote to her this morning knowing I was going to be on here and 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 ask whether she's gotten any any satisfaction yet and i haven't re received a reply but as, but as far as i know uh no jewish organization is taking on the nea right now and that is because you think that is because they are too powerful it would involve a lot of work uh, that, that, that's 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 my guess and mm -hmm. uh uh, I think right now, uh, you know, it, it's it's all hands on deck right now uh, mm -hmm. in terms of fighting anti-Semitism, and and it's possible that uh, that a lot of organizations uh, need to pick and choose their battles. Uh, the focus right now is on is on lawsuits against uh, colleges. Um, there's a group, you know, uh, Stand by Us, that's doing uh, some work in in the elementary and in, in, in middle school and high schools. But uh, but this material specifically posted by the NEA, I, I don't think anybody's uh, going to touch that right now. And and it is that material that eventually leads to more uh, aggression against Jews on college campuses that the Jewish organizations would have to battle in the future, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah, because this is the basis uh, that they're. You know, this yeah. is what's this is what they're teaching kids. Right. So, um, or is it maybe that the Jewish organizations have um, 
kind of yesterday's definition <laughs> of anti-Semitism, that it can only be uh, a kind of racism and prejudices about Jewish behavior and so forth, but not so much uh, targeted at the, the, the state of Israel. I, I think if, if you asked me that question a year ago, I would have agreed, but I think they're catching on now. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, like we talked about the horseshoe theory, I, I think the far left and the far right uh, meet each other within, in anti-Semitism. And I think the, the mainstream organizations are coming to that realization slowly. You know, uh, they say that, uh, you know, generals often fight uh, the last war rather than, than, than fighting the current war. But I think uh, I think they're catching on. Okay. Um, do, do you believe that the, the National Education Association, the NEA, is aligning with a certain political perspective rather than a balanced approach to addressing anti-Semitism, in this case, a far left perspective? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and that's the nature of, uh, of labor unions. And I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. against labor unions. I, I'm a uh, I'm, you know, a, a far left myself, um, but I think uh, uh, they all kind of, you know, they're they're on this bandwagon of uh, of, of painting Israel and Zionism uh, uh, in in one way and and making them part of a narrative that they're just not a part of, forcing it into the, you know, co colonial and and, and anti-colonial uh, space or or uh, or uh, mm -hmm. uh, oppressor and, and, and oppressed. Uh, uh, state, you know, and and that's uh, as you know, the the history and current events are, are are a lot different, a lot more nuanced than that. But I think uh, that's a simplistic way of, of of looking at the world, and that's what they're teaching the teachers to teach their uh, their kids. Uh, and a lot of uh, Jewish teachers are are feeling very alone right now because they're not getting any support from their. Uh, administrators, they're not getting any support from the National Education Association. Uh, so they're they're left with this this material uh, that that they know is is completely false. So here's the the issue. Not only does this the NEA have this information on its site, but then there are the ethnic studies programs that are being used in K through 12 schools that are pushing the white settler colonialism dogma mm -hmm. and and then how do we work you know what can we do about those oh yeah yeah it's it, they're teaching a, a radical uh, it's called liberatory ethnic studies les model and these groups are are well funded and, and they're aggressive and uh it teaches uh explicitly that uh that palestines are marginalized and israel is white colonial a, a, a pressure a, a oppressor um <clears throat> The, the the way to fight it is you know th there are there are organizations that, that are fighting it uh, like the Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism are, are fighting legal battles um, uh, in in, uh, in in Washington State um, I spoke to one parent anonymously about uh, uh, you know some of the material that they're objecting to and um, um, I just recently spoke to uh, are you aware of CAMERA, the committee? Uh, for, yes, we've interviewed um, someone from CAMERA. Okay, well, they have a, a, a recent special uh, like education uh, wing now, and they're they're taking a look at all the uh, anti-Zionist, anti-Israel, and, <clears throat> and anti-Semitic books that are being pushed, and they're coming up with their own list of uh, of, of books, um, a total of a hundred that are more um, um, that are more factual, and and they're trying to get that. Uh, uh, into this, into the hands of teachers. So you know there, there there are various things that we can do. You know Jewish organizations need to take a more active stance. Uh, you know against these dangers, uh, uh, they need to take a look at uh, at, at cameras, uh, um, alternative material. Uh, ADL also has has a, a you know a very fine list of educational material that teaches the truth about the Israeli Palestinian conflict, and. Um, um, show up at, at your local school board meetings and, and, and fight for your point of view. Right. So can you describe to us what is happening in Washington state as an example of how dangerous uh, this educational lens of 
um, Israeli Zionist colonialism, etc. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's infiltrated every aspect of K to twelve education in, in Washington State uh, under the guise of ethnic studies. Um, you know, initially it was this uh, vague suggestion in the legislature that that uh, evolved into a mandate driven by aggressive advocacy groups uh, for ethnic studies, and they promote this. Uh, vision of history that, that fosters anti-Semitism. Um, you know, uh, it, it involves, uh, you know, uh, uh, settler colonialism and, and Israel and Palestine. Uh, uh, they, 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 um, uh, it's mandatory that they teach that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict um, is uh, uh, taught in the, in the context of Native American history. So, so children as young as 10 are being taught to associate the Native American experience with the Palestinians, quote, fight to be free from Israeli dominance. Um, and it talks about Native American revolts against European encroachment, telling students that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is a useful, quote, contemporary connection for understanding the Indian wars uh, for independence. So um, uh, it, it, it uses a uh, uh, analogies like that to uh to hammer in this 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 false uh um this false uh, connection you know that palestinians are struggling to have quote their sacred homelands returned to them this is this is stuff that's actually being taught to kids in in washington today so who's behind this where's the fun here i would like to know where the funding is coming from that that that's a very good question <laughs> uh, I, I think that the, that there are uh, many hands in this you know one one of them you know, uh, it's it's a matter of, of I guess who's teaching the teachers. Where 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 did this come from in terms of uh, college education? And and we know that the cutter is uh, is really you know the country is is really um, uh, funding some of this. Um, and there are well funded organizations, not all of them funded in the United States, uh, that create front groups that make it look like they're grassroots groups like Jewish Voice for Peace, when in fact that they're not, you know, uh, they're, they're, it, it's well coordinated. And, and we saw that with the encampments at uh, on college campuses uh, uh, recently after October 7th, that uh, all these tents looked alike, uh, you know, that, that they, they were all, they all came from the same place, all the talking points, they were ready on October 7th. Absolutely. Um, so this was, this was all uh, planned in advance and and this is part of it um so, so these are very progressive uh um funding organizations that that are funding those kind of activities I yeah think. you know i, I even I, I hesitate to use progressive uh you know because you know you told me before the show started we're not getting political and, and i don't want to get political i'm progressive um mm -hmm. and uh uh so i don't consider uh you know, being in, in favor of, of uh, Islamic fascism to be, uh, you know, and, and living under Sharia law to be progressive at all. But uh, but they've succeeded in making it a progressive cause mm -hmm. um, for some people. Yeah. Um, so, but, yeah. but where are the Jewish organizations and where's the pushback in Washington state? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know that there are grassroots, uh, you know, real grassroots uh, uh, parents who are fighting this on an individual level, um, and uh, you know, school board by school board, uh, and and they're 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 coming up with uh, with arguments and data, and I think we also need to come up, you know, with something like what Canberra is doing right now, coming up with alternatives. This isn't well, take a look at what we brought together. I, it's going to be a, a a slow fight, you know. Camera um, is going to be uh, uh, looked on with suspicion because they're a Zionist organization. But but if it really comes at the at the at the gra grassroots from from parents and teachers saying, you know, the stuff we're teaching kids here just simply is not true. They have to pay attention. I understand that there's a group in Canada also looking at uh, school books and seeing the kind of falsehoods that are being taught about Jews in Israel. So let's just go through. Our, we always try to encourage people at the grassroots level to do something. So for those people who have uh, connections with the state of Washington, 
clearly it starts at the local school board, correct? That would be the way to perhaps tackle this rather than trying to tackle top down? Or what do you think? Now I'm asking you to be an expert. I'm just asking what you think. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, first of all, I should say that I'm not an expert in education, but I, I've been researching this uh, uh, for, for a book on fighting anti-Semitism that I'm working on. Um, having said that, uh, school board is, is one way to, of doing it. Another way is to use the tactics that the other side is using. And they're not going through local school boards necessarily, but uh, they are putting the hands, uh, the, this material directly into teachers' hands. The anti-Israel and anti-Zionist and, and anti-Semitic content is being given for free uh, to teachers uh, by some of these organizations. And uh, and teachers, as you know, are, are just eager for you right. know, free stuff to teach the kids. And and if you're not aware of uh, of all the nuances, you know, if, uh, not every teacher is, is 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 aware of everything, you know, of, of the of the Israeli Palestinian conflict. If this says that this helps explain it, great, wonderful. Let's let's use it. So they're not. They're not, the one thing you can do is actually uh, supply this material to teachers who who have. Surprisingly, is some some level of autonomy in choosing what books they they they, they can teach their kids with. Um, you know, then there's uh, the, no, there's your, wait, your state no, no. legislature. Stop. I want you to say this again because it's bringing up something that Evelyn and I, you know, we've done. You're our 148th episode, so after a while, one tends to not remember everything. But I do remember that there are groups that. You have to be invited online in your school district, and then you get this material. So I just want you to say it again, because I'm working on a project here in Beverly Hills on a no hate zone. So literally, to go to the schools and literally provide teachers with books, put them in yeah. their hands. And get in those books from Anti-Defamation League, Camera, mm -hmm. and any other, any other organizations. Yeah. Uh, those those are the the, the main ones I'm uh, I'm okay. aware of, uh, and also uh, school librarians too. They have a lot of uh, okay. a, a lot of say in in uh, in in, in uh, what what goes into their their own libraries. Uh, um, so yeah, uh, I, I think they're 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 multi pronged tact you know uh, tactics that that the parents and educators can take. You know, like I say, it's all it's all Jewish hands on deck right now. You know. Yes. Uh, attack it from from wherever your area of expertise is. Yes. If you're a political person, approach it politically. If uh, if, if you're a, uh, an educator, then, uh, then then do it. You know, uh, uh, approach approach local teachers who are are feeling very alone and confused right now. And and what I, what, what, what I admire so much about you, Howard, is that you. Um, is that you stand up against an, uh, an, an injustice in your own political corner. Um, that, 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 is, that is something very admirable. I think that, that we all can, uh, wherever we stand politically, uh, can, oh, take, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, can take an, uh, an example uh, from. Thank you for that. Well, part of it is I'm 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 uh, 58 years old and I've already burned all my bridges anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped caring what uh, what other people think. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I just yeah. want to add one thing before Evelyn asks the next question. I've been sending my whole uh, many of my Holocaust books to a library in my hometown of Elgin, Illinois. It's basically a town with very few Jews. So mm -hmm. lots of us, especially as we get older, have books on Israel. And, and we recently interviewed Noah Tishby, and, and she has a very good book on Israel that really explains it. So mm -hmm. it's one of the simplest things listeners can do is look at their books and say, what can I give to my local library? Don't ask them to spend funds. Don't have, ask them to go through the whole whatever it is acquisition process. Here are some books. And it's really easy to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is, and and uh, librarians, school librarians, would love it too. Yes, you know, both they're, city they're, they're eager, eager for this material. Yes, I um, think that is yeah. that is a wonderful practical advice we can all um, uh, take to heart and and do something with. Are there other things um, that our listeners can do in the schools in their communities uh, to stop the spread of anti-Semitism? Um, um, in schools for students as young as kindergarten? And is there something 
they can do against the funding you were talking about of yeah. my Qatar and other and other sources. Well, <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not sure what we can do about the funding. That's that's been going on for a long time, and I think that has to be tackled at, at the national level. Mm -hmm. um, locally, um, you know, uh, one thing that I've I've discovered. Uh, in my interviews with, with various people who are fighting anti-Semitism in, in various spheres is the need for allies. We are 0.2% of the world population, something like 2.2% of, of the United States population. There aren't too many Jews out there. Despite what you read about Jewish control and power, we are really very tiny, tiny community. So the more uh, allies we can make, the better. And, and we're seeing that at the, at the state level, when it comes to uh, defining what anti-Semitism is, and 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 the states that are that are successfully doing it are the ones that are reaching out uh, across the aisle and across religious communities, uh, uh, and 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 making and making friends. You know, as I you know, and this is some, uh, only something that I recently came to terms with is that uh, you know evangelical Christians uh, uh, have a history of 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 you know unfriendly relations with with the, with the Jewish community but recently they've been very pro pro Israel so that's something we can agree on i don't have to to accept their entire agenda but we can we can uh, cooperate on uh, on this against anti-semitism because uh, that's that's where our our um that's where our interests sort of combine um so you know the idea of partnering with uh, with other people and educating them uh, about what's going on, you know, especially educating. Uh, you know, there, there are many people who believe that Jewish Voice for Peace is a liberal Jewish group. Um, they're not. Um, and here's why, you know, and, and, and this, is, uh, this is what we can do in, in reaching out, you know, across the political spectrum and across the, the religious spectrum. So we're coming to the close of the program, but not only giving you last thoughts, but I know that you're doing some other activities. Do you want to talk about some, just briefly, some of the other things that you're doing to fight anti-Semitism? Oh, sure. Um, well, after October 7, I kind of went through my own, you know, stages of, of grief and thought, okay, well, what, what can I do? And the only thing I know how to do reasonably well is write. So I decided to, uh, uh, to write a book called uh, From Outrage to Action, A Practical Guide to Fighting Anti-Semitism. And, and I think what I want to, you know, what I want to do or what I'm doing is talking to people who are fighting it successfully. You know, a lot of Jews are feeling helpless saying, what can I do? You know, uh, they're inundated uh, with, with, with anti, anti, news of anti-Semitism spreading around the world. So here are some people in school systems that are fighting it. Here are some people in the literary community who are fighting it. Here are some people at the college level, uh, uh, at the political level, um, in, in various walks of life. Um, maybe they're not successful. Maybe they're just a drop in the bucket, but here's what you can do depending on your own talents. And then uh, along with that, I, I recently uh, uh, started writing about um, uh, anti-Semitism anti -Semitism within the literary community. And a lot of Jewish authors are feeling, you know, uh, are being blackballed and their careers are being put yes. on hold right now because there's this perception that nobody wants to hear from Jews right now. So me and a few partners are launching a Jewish friendly publishing company. And uh, it's still very early stages on that. Uh, but uh, but uh, look, look, look for news about that soon. So how Fantastic can initiatives. Uh, fantastic, Howard. How can Thank people... You get in touch with you if they have information about their school system that they think you might be interested in for your book and your work. Sure. So you'll, uh, you'll, you'll give us a, a, a thing to put it. Well, but you could also say it now, but you'll give us a thing to put at the end of the description when we upload. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, they can always write to me. I'm at Howard at Howard And it's last uh, name is L O V Y. Um, or you can go to my website, Howard and uh, there are links to everything. I'm in, you know, I'm on, I'm on X, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Substack. I have a Substack newsletter where I, I update people regularly on, on what I'm working on, especially the 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 uh, the book and, and the literary community that we're we're launching. So uh, just Google me, and and I'm all over the place there. So, <laughs> so we, well, I'm looking forward to your book. Thank um, you. 
and to get your advice on 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 what I and others can do. Any Thank other you. last any other last calls to action that we hope our listeners will listen to? Yeah, don't lose hope. Uh, it, it you're not alone. Even if you know, I, I live here in in beautiful northern Michigan. I'm one of only a handful of Jews here, but I know that there's a larger community out there, uh, and we all have each other's back. So uh, nobody is is going through this alone. I think that's very important. Thank you, Howard. We thank our listeners. For those of you who want to know more about Evelyn and my activities, go to Never Again Is Now podcast at uh, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And please, whenever you can, speak up against anti-Semitism and all hate.